the SEC begins. The SEC schedule begins this weekend for LSU and Mississippi State squaring off in Tiger Stadium. And, you know, LSU have been a mixed bag against Mississippi, Mississippi State, obviously. Last year's game, I know people will point it, it was a close game. Of a, well, if anyone says that game was close, they weren't watching that game. LSU's defense were dominant. Started with uh, two forced uh, turnovers by Cordell Flott. Interception, and then a forced fumble. I believe recovered by Derek Stingley Jr. Um, unbelievable defensive effort. Or may, maybe Stingley was already out at this point. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, LSU's defense, instead of the horrible two high safety, three, you know, four three base, ugly uh, Pelini defense that just was so easily destroyed in 2020 for over 600 yards. Durante Jones had a better scheme. In 2021, we sat back, absorbed pressure, allowed no yards after catch. I, I'm trying to remember how many completions it was, but it was a ridiculous amount of completions that we allowed to Will Rogers, and I believe like 400 yards maybe, something like that, but it wasn't, there was no explosive plays, and they barely got in the end zone until the end of the game. And um, I believe Damone Clark had like, what, 18 tackles or something that day? Like, it was just ridiculous. They were all over the place. Our linebackers had a fantastic, fantastic game on the day. Um, so did, you know, safeties, Jay Ward. At the same time, coming into this game, this season... You know, I think you'll see the same type of a game plan against Will Rogers and Mike Leach's offense. But something that really, I really want to talk about with with you guys that really comes to my attention over the last two games, watching uh, Mike Jones Jr. and Greg Penn. These are two players that I was higher on than Keith Richards in 1976, okay? higher on these players than Snoop Dogg on Willie Nelson's tour bus hanging out with Matthew McConaughey. I was really high on these two players because you saw them flying around with pace, having abilities to affect stuff in coverage. Um, Greg Penn was getting picked on in coverage at times and, and, you know, showed some resiliency and then it was a mixed bag. But Mike Jones Jr., that was supposed to be, you know, his specialty, coverage. You know, we saw that pick on Justin Fields in the red zone in in the college football playoff semifinal against Ohio State when he was at Clemson. You know, he was the understudy to Isaiah Simmons. And, uh, you know, did not receive a lot of reps at Clemson because of that. And, you know, I think that could have hurt his development at times. And then he comes to LSU, wants to really reignite that development in 2021. They say, yeah, we'll make you a middle linebacker. But then Coach O just basically sits him for the first, like, four games or whatever. Just wouldn't let him play. He comes in, you know, more of as like a pass rush specialist. Really affects the game that way against you know Alabama for one. Has has a bunch of tackles, I believe, in that Mississippi State game too last year. I think he had at least five or six tackles in that Mississippi State game. But um, you know, I think he had about thirty eight tackles last year as well. But right now, Mike Jones Jr. Greg Penn worry the crap out of me because, and we wrote this in the article as well after the Southern game. They weren't impressive against Southern. They weren't imp- and they weren't impressive against Florida State. Yes, Greg Penn got Greg Penn the third got a lot better as the game went on, making some pass deflections and coverage, um, recovering a fumble, 
So it's looking looking overall a lot better, but this is Southern. At the first of the game, when combined alongside uh, Mike Jones Jr., those two were a little aloof. And against Florida State, I know we only allowed 3.5 on the ground, but in the passing game, those two were picked on. They were They were housed at times. And so I'm trying to figure out, is this game the chance for Micah Baskerville to, to really reclaim a starting spot from one of those two? Because it's a perfect game for, for Micah Baskerville. And, you know, this is a guy who was the second ta- leading tackler of the last year, third leading tackler of the year before, um, had an interception against Florida last year. He scored multiple touchdowns as an LSU Tiger, not as a non-offensive LSU Tiger. Almost scored a third on an onside kick return in 2019 as well. Almost had two in one season. Micah Baskerville blocked a punt that was just absolutely ridiculous this last Saturday. Led to a safety. Should have been another touchdown. Evan Francione could not recover that thing. Um, but still led to a safety. He put nine points on the board, just like that. I know the pick six was kind of a gimme, but Micah Baskerville used to be susceptible in coverage. And he has totally worked on that. In 2020, for all of his tackling prowess, he was uh, getting burnt in coverage. 2021, we saw... A mixed bag at first, and then he completely turned that around by the season's end. It was one of the best Tigers on the team, and we included him in our best 11 Tigers of 2021. And uh, I think he was like number six or number seven or something like that. And so I, I really think this is a game for Micah Baskerville to shine. How mu- How much he has had practice time you know how much has he has he been able to to really get his feet underneath him I, I I know he's making plays but the tackling thing is a big thing and we haven't seen Mike Jones Jr. or Greg Penn the third really deliver on that we saw Mike Jones Jr. make an incredible play on Jordan Travis where he missed the sack comes flying up and still tracks him down to get him behind the line of scrimmage for it, the sack awesome play had some help with B.J. Ojolari, huge hit over the top to finish it, but we need to see that from Mike Jones Jr. I'm just I'm just wondering if Mike Jones Jr. is better attacking the backfield rather than playing in coverage like we like we believed. And maybe, you know, letting Micah Baskerville be that coverage linebacker and Mike Jones Jr. just focus on the backfield the quarterback and what he can see in front of him because when he's got his head on a swivel, I it's we haven't seen the best of, from him yet in coverage. And I know some people are going to kill me for this, you know, take. And I gotta say, I absolutely love the personality and charisma for Mike Jones Jr. And I think he's going to be a great Tiger. And I'm just not sure if it's this season or if he's going to head to the NFL draft and we'll never see it at LSU or if he stays for another year. I'm not sure, but I really would love to see Mike Jones Jr. be a powerhouse at linebacker for LSU. But I think even his biggest fans know right now he hasn't he hasn't played up to snuff, really. He had the sack. He had the tackles in the, in the first game. Two tackles for on, in like a quarter and a half against Southern. Everybody else was making plays. I, I I just wonder if Mike Jones Jr. isn't being utilized to the best of his abilities. Maybe he should be more used to attack the football, attack the ball carriers, attack the backfield, rather than being used in coverage. That's just something I'm really thinking of, especially when we're going into Mississippi State, where the intermediary routes can destroy us. But one thing I love from this LSU defense 
They've shut out both teams we've played in the first quarter. We shut out one team for basically three quarters until uh, would have probably shut them out if not for the pick six from Nussmeyer. Um, a team we should have shut out, of course, but you know, blanked Florida State for a while there. And you know, this is a team. This is, I'm sorry. This is a defense that, with their backs against the wall, made four huge, huge red zone stops, which gave Florida State zero points. A field goal that that was missed. Uh, fourth down red zone stop from Sage Ryan. The Makai Wingo fumble recovery. And then another huge stop from Makai Garner tipping that pass. You know, this, or I believe it was Jay Ward, one of the two. This is um, this is a defense that will, will allow the yards, probably. Probably not give up much on the ground for Mississippi State, even though they're not going to really probably try to even run the ball. But... As far as allowing the points and giving in and you know breaking, I don't I don't expect that. I see them bending, but I don't see them breaking against Mississippi State. I don't think Will Rogers can really destroy this defensive back unit right now. I really feel if we utilize the right personnel and moving Jay Ward to nickel might just be the matchup for this game that we that we utilize. Maybe it's not a permanent move, maybe it's just for this game. But I feel this is the perfect game to have someone like Sage Ryan on the field. This is someone who made a huge fourth down pass breakup right before half in only his third appearance as a Tiger. And then in his fourth appearance Recovered two fumbles, and only the third Tiger in the 21st century to do that alongside Brady James and Jacoby Stevens. He's a playmaker. He's still raw. But he's a playmaker, and he needs to continue to receive reps to develop to his maximum. I really do believe that Sage Ryan could be a special, special player for LSU, we just have to put him on the field. And I think this is a game where someone like him with his skill set is absolutely needed. Find a way to get him on the field creatively. If you know you have to go down a linebacker, fine. This is the game to do that. They're going to be airing it out nonstop, Mississippi State. This is the game where we can add that extra defensive back, get Sage Ryan on the field. And I want to see some creative blitzes with these defensive backs. It'll be interesting to see Greg Brooks Jr. back there with Major Burns. Um, What will that tandem provide? That'll be interesting. Jay Ward playing his third different position in three seasons. I mean, this guy, he's just a total football player, isn't he, Jay Ward? Just a total football player. He'll go anywhere, play any position. He just wants to help the team win. And you know what? There's NFL scouts watching this guy and going, damn, can he punt too? (laughs) Like, I mean, Jay Ward is incredible. Rushing the passer like he does. Heat-seeking missile across the field and coverage as well. I mean, Jay Ward can really, really pour it on. It's just we got to use him right at nickel position this this week. This is a game LSU with the home field advantage with Mississippi State being one-dimensional. John Emery Jr. returning at running back. LSU's receivers getting going. Jaden Daniels looking absolutely ridiculous, looking just so good right now. Looking like one of the best quarterbacks in college football, actually, statistically, and just playing like it. Clutch clutch play, delivering on key downs. His completion percentage is off the charts. Um, he's scoring both ways possible on, on, on the ground, through the air. He's hitting different receivers. 
it's um it's very promising for LSU against Mississippi State, and I want to see us control the football. I want to see us control the game on offense. I want to see us have a, a big part of our game plan needs to be to take the ball away from Mississippi State and control the game with our offense. Keep Will, keep Will Rogers off the field. Keep our defense fresh, and our defense will create turnovers through doing that. He can't throw the ball 50 to 60 times against our defense without a turnover. I would be shocked if our defense did not at least create one or two interceptions from you know 50 to 60 passing attempts. That's something that Matt House, Robert Steeples, have got to be preaching. And, you know, B.J. Ojolari comes back up front. Huge for the defense. Ollie Gay comes back up front as well. And Savion Jones now has a really strong game under his belt. Desmond Little has a really strong game under his belt. Harold Perkins. We now know that we can use him in a variety of positions and he can be successful as a freshman. Seven tackles leading the team as a starting defensive end, edge rusher, outside linebacker hybrid. Just exactly what I was foreseeing for this young man's future at LSU. Put him somewhere where he can be successful and let him go. And so, I think Matt House has to deploy all of these guys at his advantage. And you know what? If um, Mike Jones Jr. is being susceptible, you know, I want to see Matt House either, you know, show him that, hey, we're going to put the guy in who does the job. And that means you have to might have to watch a few plays for a bit here and, and get that through your head. And I want to see him coach him up because Mike Jones Jr. has to be one of our better players for us to be successful this year. If he's not, it would be a you know a big loss of veteran key leadership there in the middle of the field. And we really need Mike Jones Jr. to play at his optimum. He has the skill set to be a dynamic coverage linebacker. But right now it seems like he's really only affecting the line of scrimmage. So maximize him in the best way possible. And this game, we're going to be covering it a lot more. This is just the beginning, baby. You're going to see us uh, on multiple podcasts this week. Watch out for multiple articles. We've already got our top five performers from the Southern game. And there's a lot in that, not just about the Southern game, but a lot going forward and a lot about these players individually that I feel... As Tiger fans, um, information you would definitely want to check out. So everybody, happy Tuesday. Go Tigers.